And, uh, you know, that's probably a good bridge into the many defamation oh, yeah, so cases this week. Let's, let's, start, let's start with Nunes because uh, it's, a, it's an interesting case. And someone posted a comment. I forget where it was. It might have been on Locals. It might have been in the comment section. Long story short for Nunes, everybody, he's suing the Washington Post because they ran nothing shy of a hit piece saying that Nunes supported Trump's baseless comments that uh, he was wiretapped in 2017 when the Post itself in 2017 said no, Nunes disagreed with Trump, said that he wasn't wiretapped by the purest definition of the term wiretapped, but rather he was caught up in surveillance, which everyone knows now to be true. Um, they referred to the claim as baseless, Nunes supporting this baseless claim in a hit piece suggesting that Nunes had something of an illicit midnight run with Michael Ellis, who was appointed general counsel for the NSA, Nunes sued. Washington Post issued a garbage retraction in which they said the midnight run, Nunes says, occurred during the daylight hours, and they corrected in a, in a very weak way their prior misinformation. Bottom line, Washington Post asked for a motion to dismiss, lost on the motion to dismiss, but succeeded on the dismissal of the aspects of the claim based on negligence. More, it doesn't really matter much because Nunes is going to get to continue with the lawsuit. But the judge said, basically confirmed that prima facie, it's not it's not on the merits to survive a motion to dismiss, uh, calling something baseless, calling an, an allegation baseless could suffice for an action in defamation, um, which is very interesting. And someone said, now all these politicians have to go back and find articles where they refer to their statements as baseless, where they weren't and file suit. Now I like the decision. Uh, I, the, the reasoning was good in that the judge said basically for the, uh, actual malice, it could a jury could come to the conclusion that there was actual malice because of the fact that the Washington Post basically contradicted their own prior reporting in order to in order to hit, run the hit piece on Nunes. Uh, do you think it's good law? Do you think it was a little bit uh, too pro Nunes? And I didn't dive into the judge. What was the political appointment history of the judge? Do you know? Well, it's interesting. It's the same judge who issued the Dominion decisions. He's got both. Okay. So it's the same judge who provided presided over the Nunes versus Washington Post case is presiding over the Dominion versus Sidney Powell versus Rudy Giuliani versus Michael Lindell case issued big decisions this week in all of those cases. And so the uh, he had he had choice of law questions, venue transfer questions, personal jurisdiction questions, uh, substantive defamation law questions. So I mean a lot of legal issues to deal with. And I think for the most part came to a, a decision that won't be reversed on appeal. I'll put it that way. He's a late Trump appointee, though he comes from the very pro-government uh, side of the equation legally. Uh, so the you know so he's going to be a Federalist Society type judge, not as bad as Barrett, uh, which people got to see this week. Barrett was the right. uh, decided unilaterally to not allow uh, the uh, Indiana University. Uh, challenge the the challenge to the indiana university's vaccine mandate uh unilaterally said that no emergency injunctive relief would be heard by the supreme court when normally that's transferred to the whole court uh some of us had predicted this is how barrett would handle these kind of <laughs> questions took a lot of criticism from a lot of people uh on the right about it and a lot of those people on the right should be busy apologizing to everybody out there right now but instead they're hiding but a lot of people on the right keep pushing these Federalist Society nominees and keep getting burned and then going, oh, how did that happen? Yeah, and then no, they go and do the same thing again. People in the chat early on were not happy with uh, with with A B A C A C B. Um, no, but so, so well, maybe we'll come back to that in a second, actually, if there's more to elaborate. But in this particular decision, it, good, it will not get overturned in appeal. This is the same judge who allowed Dominion suit to proceed against uh, Lindell and Sidney Powell. And... Full, I mean, full disclosure, this I think it, it shows consistent reasoning. I think those lawsuits should continue. I mean, I think they've alleged enough. I come from a jurisdiction in Quebec where dismissal, premature dismissal on a motion to dismiss is referred to as the ultimate sanction. And the judges here only grant it really, really, really exceptionally uh, before depositions or before discoveries, a little more liberally after discoveries if there's like overt contradictions that come out through deposition. But I come from a jurisdiction where they never get tossed, and it always goes to the merits to a flaw. But when I've got exposed to the American system, I noticed that they get tossed early, in my mind, to a flaw. So I, I, yeah. I appreciate that Dominion should go forward, and I and I think that Nunes should go forward. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, yes, yeah, substantively, 
Uh, it, it was a very good ruling because all these media places have been playing games where they lie about somebody but say, nah, really, it was just an opinion and you could have interpreted it differently. Uh, but when you choose to use language like baseless, when you choose to use language like meritless, when you choose to use language like no evidence or without evidence, they're, they're now going to start getting burned because that was the point of the judge. He's like, that's a factual statement you're making. That's no longer a statement of opinion. You're saying there's absolutely no evidence that supports his claims. You're saying he's saying something that he knows not to be true. That's that's a defamatory statement and can be actionable. And maybe you can prove that you issued corrections and retractions that mitigate actual malice. But that's for trial or later on post-discovery, not for pretrial. But or, or you then get into the motivated reasoning of the judge who dismissed... Um... Candace Owens lawsuit where they said when the fact checker says hoax alert, they don't mean hoax alert. They just mean read with more caution. I mean, that's that's why there are two lines of, of reasoning that are fundamentally mutually incompatible. I prefer this judge who says when you make a fact check statement, uh, a fact check statement, it's a factual statement. You're saying baseless is not opinion. It means as a matter of fact, there is nothing to support it. No evidence. But then you get these other. I'm going to call them wonky judges, like in Candace Owens saying hoax alert from a fact checker is not a defamatory statement of fact. It's just read with more caution. How, where, where do these all get reconciled? Because they, they, you get these wildly varying judgments depending on jurisdiction. Where is the uniformity uh, or, or top court reconciliation of the principles? There should be a little bit more clear standards. To me, the, the, the decisions in the Nunes and Dominion cases by the same judge articulated pretty well the standards. Uh, the only issue I would have had disagreement on was venue, but the, uh, on the Dominion cases. But otherwise, he had pretty good defamation-specific standards that conforms to the law and understood it pretty well. The problem is there's two, as long as there's discretion there, you're going to have judges making a politically motivated decisions uh, where they decide no reasonable juror could conclude something that everybody knows a reasonable juror could conclude. I mean, uh, but the, you know, yeah. no, no, it, it was the, the, you know, my first exposure to this was with the Sandman case, um, where the judge made the list of statements. Oh, not not of and about salmon. I was like, no. When you say not of and about salmon, that's a jury question. That's not a that's not a that's not a legal question. But I, I think a lot of these have been dismissed way too early. It's good to see some of these going to the merits. Um, I very much think that everyone should get their day in court, which means not getting dismissed on a 12B6 motion to dismiss. The aspect of uh, Nunes, where he alleged negligence. Now, I forget the details of the negligence, but th the negligence side gets dismissed. Uh, what's, the, what's the basis? What's the rationale? And how do you feel about the negligence side getting dismissed, but not the defamation side? There's no negligent defamation unless you're not a public figure. So the, the the lawyers that Nunez has have had a lot of, let's just say they haven't been real successful, and some of us have not been big fans of some of their work. So that I think they caught a good judge because negligent defamation is something, I, I didn't see how it could be alleged, right? I mean, he's clearly a public figure. Yeah. So I don't, I didn't understand that. And so that was always going to be dismissed. And luckily they caught a judge that didn't hold that against them, that they filed something that most lawyers would know not to file.